Welcome to WDFN.com. We do it every Friday, the Friday face-off. Sometimes we sneak in an extra one. When there's a b breaking news, you come to WDFN.com. But for now, it's Eric Chase, Matt Shepard from Shep in the Morning. And t this week, we're going to talk hockey and not Red Wing hockey. But there's a big story going on in the NHL. And, and Shep, I kind of feel bad for the Kings because they're getting overshadowed because you got two NBA teams going deep in the playoffs. Yeah. And here are the LA Kings. Uh, you remember the old Moses Malone line? Fo, 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 fo. yeah. <laughs> That's what the Kings are doing to the Western <laughs> Conference. Well, it's not just that. Even Los Angeles, even locally, there was an NBC affiliate that when the playoffs began, <laughs> put up a graphic over the anchor's left shoulder that had the Lakers, Clippers, and Sacramento Kings logo. That's how much disrespect the Los Angeles Kings have gotten. It's a story that nobody's paying attention to, and it's really unfortunate. Here's what I would ask you. Why is it, and I've brought this up before, why is it when USC, before Pete Carroll got there, and they went through the lull times of their college football program, why was it bad for college football, or maybe more importantly, important for college football to have USC good? again. Why is it important for the Lakers to be good in basketball? Why is it important that Los Angeles constantly be this site for a new NFL team? And important for the Dodgers to be good in baseball? And yet when hockey comes to bind and the Kings are good, nobody considers it an important step for the NHL. I just think it's bad timing because, you know, when the teams you mentioned, you need the Yankees to be good. You need the Raiders to be the, the historic teams in yeah. sports. Yeah. And when it comes to the NHL, well, you need the Maple Leafs to be good. You need the Canadians to be good. I don't see any bad coming from uh, the team in the second largest city in the country being good. It just so happens whenever they are and they're in this situation, they're overshadowed by not one but two teams in Los Angeles, two basketball teams going through the NBA playoffs who could possibly meet the Western Conference Finals. Probably and, and won't, then, but yeah. But if they, could you imagine this? If the Clippers and Lakers met in the Western Conference Finals and the Kings were on the cusp of winning the Stanley Cup, <laughs> would anybody know? If a tree falls in the forest. Yeah, that's right. I, I can't imagine it just because the Clippers have only won three playoff series in their history, and I don't think they're going to beat the San Antonio Spurs. But the best team in Los Angeles... Even though the Dodgers lead the West, even though the Lakers right now and Clippers are playing in the playoffs, is the LA Kings. I think part of the problem, too, is that they were an eight seed in the West, but all they've done so far, and they still have a game or two to beat with uh, Phoenix and reach the Stanley Cup Finals, all they've done so far is win every single one of their road playoff games, seven so far, extended back to a year ago, and it's nine. The seven and oh mark that they've set is an and ties an NHL record, and they've done it in different ways with great guys and guys that you want to be able to follow. Dustin Brown is an American captain. Jonathan Quick might be the best American goalie. Sorry, Jimmy Howard. Those are guys that we should be gravitating toward, and too many people don't know who they are. Can I spin this off to Los Angeles for a second sure. and tie it to the NFL? I think the NFL should be paying attention to this situation and how that city reacts. Because right now there's there's this, this spurt of athletic greatness, professional sports greatness in the second biggest market in the country. As you just detailed, Dodgers uh, playing as good as anybody in baseball, the Pujols situation and yeah. the Angels as they struggle, uh, and three teams storming through the playoffs in hockey and the NBA. I think the NFL should keep an eye on this because they need to see how Los Angeles, is that what it is? Sure. How they're paying attention to the local sports scene. Obviously you've got millions of people to draw from to support an NFL team, the biggest sport in the country. but. How is how are those people in LA reacting to the greatness right now in sports? Does it feel good? Are they following it, or is it just? Well, I think know, they are, but more, but maybe more importantly is the greatness not just of the teams, of the players that they have. They have superstars, and I mean superstars on those teams. Now you may not think Dustin Brown is, or Kopitar is, or a guy like Richards is. But they are difference makers. And then you have superstars, obviously, with Kobe Bryant, maybe an Andrew Bynum, Blake Griffin and a Chris Paul, absolutely. The problem you'd have with the NFL is, A, you're not going to put a new team there. It has to be an existing team. And most people think it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they don't have one single superstar. And don't give me Blaine Gabbert, please. Yeah, it's interesting. I want to see if the NFL is paying attention. You know, are the people of L.A. paying attention to the sports greatness they're a part of right now? As we wrap this up, or maybe we go an extra few minutes here, it's good to have you on WDFN.com for the Friday Faceoff. You okay with the 8th seed kind of pulling a New York Giants here if the Kings ultimately win the Stanley Cup? Yes, yes. I, I think too many people have said the 8th seed only excels in hockey, and we quickly forget on what Memphis did to San Antonio a year ago and what... Uh, you know, Chicago was beaten earlier this year in the playoffs by the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference. So I have no problem with it. We always 
talk about who's getting hot at the right time. The NCAA tournament, for example. All oh, this team gets hot at the right time. Well, the LA Kings happen to get right at the right time. They, they're, they're really not an eight seed if you look at it because since they brought Daryl Sutter on, they've been one of the better teams in hockey. Since they made a move or two at the trade deadline, they've been one of the better teams in hockey. I don't view, the, view them as a legitimate eight seed. I saw them as a scary club going in, knowing the talent that they have. Do you, do you think teams kind of have to change their mindset knowing that they could be the best team in their particular regular season? but they're upset early in whatever playoff they participate in. Do you think teams who want to win a title have to change their mindset? I think Theo Epstein said this a couple of years ago. We just want to win 95 games and give, give ourselves a shot in the playoffs. Right. Do you think he, in, in hockey, you think the, the Vancouver Canucks, probably the best team in hockey from beginning President's to end. President's Trophy winners, yeah. Gone to the Kings in the first round. Yeah. And, and that President's Trophy, as the Red Wings have experienced before, sure. it goes for nothing. Do you think you kind of have to go, okay, forget an 82-game season. Maybe we got to have like a 110-game season where we got to be good. Yeah, I don't know if it's a mindset as much as it is a style of play. Um, Vancouver is a team that many people feel is built for the regular season. A team like St. Louis was very good. They were the two seed, but L.A. knocked them off. One and two, first team to ever do that, by the way. And then on the other hand, you got the Rangers, who were the number one seed in the East. They played well during the regular season, and they're 1-1 with New Jersey. They've reached the Eastern Conference Finals, so I think it depends on how your team is built. Parody makes for great storytelling, sure great entertainment, and great drama, and that's what drives the ratings and the dollars and our interest as sports fans. Good to have have you here. You know what? I'll say it. I know the Red Wings are done, but this Kings team is fun. They're young. They're yeah. good to watch. Go Kings. Beat the Devils or Rangers. Another Friday face-off next week on WDFN.com.